In July 1921, the Communist Party of China held its first national congress right here in Shanghai. Some 13 delegates attended, representing about 50 members from across the country. A short six years later, and a national communist civic government had been established in Shanghai, admittedly quite short-lived, like the Paris Commune of the 1840s Paris Commune. But by that stage, the membership of the Communist Party had increased a thousand-fold. I wonder why. Lu Jiazui is a symbol of Chinese modernity these days. In the 1920s and 1930s, however, there were just wharves and factories. In 1921, a strike broke out during the first National Congress of the Chinese Communist Party. They informed the Chinese Communist Party to send party members to lead the strike immediately. After 20 days of struggle, the workers gained their legitimate rights. The early history of the Communist Party in the 1920s and 30s is a story of workers and strikes. But it was the intellectuals who first encountered Marx, and they were the ones who first brought him to China. However, they soon realized that the true driving force of the revolution was going to be the working class. This was a resolution passed during the first National Congress of the Communist Party of China, by which it was decided that the central task of the party after its founding was to organize labor unions, to found workers' schools, to educate workers, and to lead workers' movements. A month later, a party-led labor movement organ, China's Labor Composition Secretary Department, was established. Subsequently, the Central Committee of the Communist Party of China once again issued the first document, the announcement of the Central Bureau of the Communist Party of China to party organizations in various localities, promoting specific plans and requirements for workers' movements. I'm standing in the southeastern part of Putuo district, an area that used to be called Xiaoshadu. Along the two banks of the Suzhou Creek behind me, there were lines of factories, most of them cotton factories. This was the most heavily industrialized part of Shanghai in the 1920s and 30s. At that time, Shanghai was the industrial center of China with more than 500,000 workers, a quarter of the country's total. Most of the workers here were poor migrants from surrounding provinces who had long lived in poor conditions and had low social status. In the autumn of 1920, the CPC founded the first half-day school for workers right here. In February 1925, right about where I'm standing now, one of the biggest strikes in Shanghai's history began. It all started because of a young child laborer, a girl who was beaten savagely by thugs arranged by the Japanese bosses. Soon, the party formed a committee to direct the strike and ordered the Shanghai Party Department to mobilize. Workers during the strike were unified to a surprising extent. Nearly 40,000 of them at 22 factories, forcing Japanese capitalists and Chinese workers to negotiate a settlement. However, this incident had also further generated conflict between factories and workers. In the beginning of May, the Japanese mill owners tore up the agreement and suddenly fired the workers. On May the 15th, a young worker communist named Gu Zhenghong led the workers to claim what they were owed. To their surprise, the Japanese factory manager shot at them. Gu was shot several times and died the next day. The case of Gu Zhenghong quickly spread to workers in Shanghai's cotton mills. Nine days later, nearly 10,000 workers and students attended his memorial service. Liu Hua, the head of the Communist Party Workers' Club, told the story. 
A mood of bitterness and humiliation spread from the meeting. Finally, on May the 30th, it erupted. This is East Nanjing Road. In today's Shanghai, it's one of the busiest commercial streets. But you might not have noticed this sign. It marks the place 93 years ago, a bloody event happened, which in turn led to some of the most nationwide anti-feudal and anti-imperialist movements in modern Chinese history. On the last Saturday of May in 1925, more than 2,000 workers and students came to Nanjing Road to spread leaflets and give speeches. The concession policemen drove in, beat up the crowd, and arrested more than 100 people. They brought these 100 students and workers to here, Lao Jia Pufang, and locked them up inside. Later that same day, outside these gates, 10,000 people congregated, shouting and demanding their release. And then the police arrived, opened fire, shot and killed 13 of them, and injured dozens more. The news of the shooting speeded on wings across the whole city. The next day found Shanghai an armed camp, with the situation worsening from hour to hour. It was as if everyone had been waiting for this moment, when all hidden discontent should be given its fullest possible chance for expression. Starting on June the 1st, Shanghai held a general strike. Some 200,000 workers left the factory floors, 50,000 students started marching on the streets, businessmen in the concession areas shut their shops, and even Chinese policemen hired by concession authorities announced that they would stop work. The Communist Party of China was very active in this movement. They set up a municipal trade union which became the main force in the struggle and later became an important armed force of the Communist Party of China. A newly formed newspaper during this period selected Chu Chiu Bai, a talented party leader with rich experience and struggle as editor-in-chief. His job was to follow up the everyday campaign news and publish exciting articles. The struggle lasted for nearly four months and ended up involving nearly 17 million workers in 700 counties across China. But its influence didn't stop there. It attracted the attention of the global press and for many people who wanted to see the establishment of a new world order in Europe and America, the Chinese workers were an inspiration. The following summer, the Northern Expedition War, a battle aimed at overthrowing warlords and unifying China, broke out. That was a time when people from across the nation were waking up from the torpor of oppression. The Communist Party of China and its armed workers responded positively and launched three armed worker uprisings in Shanghai. On March 22, 1927, the temporary municipal government of Shanghai Special City was established. As a party representing the Chinese working class, the Communist Party of China has been firmly united with working people since it was founded. It follows the ideology of Marxism. It set for the Chinese people the goals of their struggles and the way to victory. The young Communist Party of China flourished.